Hi, it's Scott Norris here. Uh, just continuing on the series on custom forms and looking at the individual elements. Nice quick video. And today we're going to look at multi-select. Now multi-select is a given. Uh, it's a drop-down essentially, well not really a drop-down, but a box uh, of uh, items that you can select multiple of, one or many. Uh, and this is it in its plain form. Now again, like with all of them, we've got our read-only, our visibility, conditions, etc but I'm really just gonna look at the values today and how we can use that. So on the values, we can actually do two things. So I love external sources, in case you uh, haven't noticed, and that way I'm able to actually change actions and not having to go into it, the editor or anything like that. So external source, for multi-select, you can have two. You can have array of string, or you can have properties. So what we'll have a look here is we'll do the, um, string. Now this is this one. And we'll hit save. Oh, first off, let's give it, let's say we might use this for application selection. Um, so we go, you know, yep, to be installed on the server, uh, for example. So let's save that. And let's go over to our catalog. We've got our custom form widget. Hopefully, we should get uh, an array of string back. And there they are. So you can see, we can hold that down, we can select multiples of them, uh, and then we can submit. So if we submit like this, it comes through. If we go to the deploy one, probably. Now, if we look at the machine. We can have a look under custom properties and we should be able to see our multi-select and we can see that it's just a comma separated string. Awesome, we can use that. And that comes through as part of the machine payload as well, which is really good. Now, that's great for string, but if you want to get a little bit trickier and do properties, you can do uh, value and label, meaning that you can show like a human readable, but then have maybe an ID or something in the back end. And we can see that that actually comes across relatively uh, the same. So I'll choose this one. The properties one here, and we'll hit save. Now if I go back into my catalog. It shouldn't look any different. Yep. So you can select that. But what that happens is that that's showing Microsoft SQL, I spelled that wrong, uh, Team Foundation Server, Internet, etc. But on the back end, if we have a look at, say, another one that I provisioned earlier, was, and I want to make this as uh, quick as possible uh, items and that was just using string that one but if I go to this one I believe this one's using the properties and we can see there how I've got zip IS SQL so they're the values not the label so uh, when you're writing it let's have a look at the action now is properties we can see we've got value and then label value then label value label value label uh, where the text is just that just simple array of string and this is just a properties not an array of properties if you do an array of properties your uh, multi-select will be just say object object uh, within it now you might have noticed too let's uh let's double up on this on this uh, uh how to a bit that the when we went to our custom form, the multi-select was a, let's say, very tiny. Now, there's no way to actually increase this in the form editor, but that's where CSS comes in. So let's have a quick look at that. I need to get this ID here. If I go to uh, trusty notepad plus plus, and I just quickly do up a, and I wanna do, width and 
let's do 600 pixel and I want to do important uh, and what we we'll actually need here too is double div so it picks that up now hopefully just doing that should be fine so let's uh, save that and we'll go into this we we'll import CSS select that one We'll save that now. Yep, yeah, okay. Now we'll go back into cancel custom forms. And there we go. It's now wider. Uh, so we can actually see all the lettering. All right. So that's it for uh, application selection. Multi-select. And I'll uh, see you later.